Hey, good morning. So we're uh, learning lessons from real people, lessons for us from real people in the Bible. And today I want to talk about Cain and Abel. They're the offspring, the two sons. We know there's another son named Seth from Adam and Eve, but these two individuals, this is, so chapter one, chapter two, you have the garden scene, you have uh, the boundaries that God sets. Yesterday we talked about, listen, blessings follow obedience, but consequences follow disobedience. Well, here in chapter three, we all know what happens. Adam and Eve eat of uh, the fruit. It's forbidden and shame breaks out. How do we know it's shame? Because God comes looking for them and he says this question, where are you? And they already are covering their bodies. What shame always bring? It brings this sense of I need to hide. Hide emotionally. I need to hide spiritually. I need to hide physically. I need to hide, right? They're in hiding. Well, Chapter three, they're banished from the garden, and here is where we see the first murder. So Cain and Abel, here's what really begins. This is the match that ignites the, 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 the rage between uh, Cain toward his brother Abel. Now, Abel shepherded the flocks. Cain worked the fields. And here's what it says in Genesis 4, 3 through 5. It says, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. Verse 4, and Abel also brought an offering, that portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord, here's what the Lord did. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, God did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Now, here's the topic that I want to talk about today. I want to talk about offering, what we bring to the Lord. First of all, it's kind of interesting that both brothers brought an offering, okay? Why did they bring an offering? Well, they recognize that God is the source. This is one of the things that we struggle with culturally. We see ourselves as the source. In fact, we're taught, we're programmed, we're socialized that you must rely on you. You can't rely on anybody else. But when it comes to the biblical worldview and a Christian worldview, this is the furthest thing from the truth. The truth is that the God, our creator, our God is the giver of all good gifts. He is the source. In fact, I believe it's uh, Deuteronomy 8. It says that the very strength we have, God gives in order for us to work. Wealth is produced because God gives us the strength, the ability, the knowledge, the skills, the competency. Who do you think that comes from? Like you didn't wake up with that. God gave you your brain, your blood, your breath so that you could work. Now, Cain and Abel, they offer this before the Lord because they see God as the source. Now, here's what's interesting. God looks at Cain's offering and he's not happy. He looks at Abel's offering and he has favor. Why? Well, here's the tricky thing. We don't know. Scripture doesn't say. There's a lot of different theories. Some commentators would say, well, because Abel was uh, having dominion and tending to the flock and Cain was working a cursed ground. Uh, there's, there's multiple theories on this. But most commentators will agree and say, well, Scripture doesn't indicate specifically, you can look into, and here's the application for us, offering, giving back to God always comes from the right heart. What is the motivation when you give to God? When you give something that costs you, and I'm talking about your resources, I'm talking about money, I'm not talking about time, I'm not talking about your talents, I'm talking about treasure. Scripture is pretty clear. God wants all of it. <laughs> you, you want to talk about what God's standard is when it comes to the New Testament and generosity? God says, man, I want all of it. So uh, I think a good a starting point is what the Old Testament calls the tithe. That's kind of the standard. And we work toward that standard so that we can say to God, whatever I have belongs to you. And here's my experience in pastoring people for 23 years. If you can't do the standard, you can't give it all. Because <laughs> you're not going to wake up one day and God's going to say, here, I need, I need this. And you're like, well, God, I, how am I going to do that when you haven't stretched and grown your faith? How do you grow your faith when it comes to offering? You know how you grow your faith? When your heart is motivated to say, I want to honor you and seek you. Get past the percentages. Get past the, the push pay. Get past all of the, get past that. Look at your heart and say, God, what is the motivation of my heart to give or maybe a better question for you is not to give. 
Like, why am I not giving? Do I not trust you? Do I not? What is your, what is your, your, I hate to break it to you, but what's your workaround for that? (laughs) Um, You know, giving has been a practice of my life because it was what was instilled to me by my parents. And so that's a practice that as your pastor, I want to instill in you. But the bigger practice, what's behind the practice is your heart. And I want your heart to be right. God cares about your heart. So ask him, God, why am I giving? What heart am I giving out of? Or why am I not giving? And what heart does that represent to you, to your way, to your word, and to your will for my life? I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow on The Daily Dose.